linear differential equation of second order with variable coefficients. Now let's look at uh, the third method of solving this. So method of changing the independent dependent variable. Now independent variable is x. So x to z where z again is going to be a function of x right so now let's begin remember our equation is going to be d2y by dx square plus p dy by dx plus qy is equal to r right so which means we have to figure out dy by dx and d2y by dx square in terms of z so let's uh, begin uh, dy by dx can be written as dy by dx and we put dz dz right okay now d2y by dx square can be written as d by dx of dy by dx which can be written as dy by dz times dz by dx right and here we apply the product so product rule would be what d by dy by dz as it is and d2z by dx square we differentiate the second term then we differentiate the first term d2y by dz square times dz by dx now remember we are differentiating with respect to x here in this case it is with respect to z so we can convert that into d2y by dx square and here we are supposed to do it with respect to x so we can write it as d2y by dz square times dz by dx multiplied by dz by dx as it is so basically when we differentiate this we get this main reason being here it is d, uh, with respect to x we are converting it to with respect to z okay and and another thing remember z is nothing but a function of x so we can do this okay so now that we have this uh, let's go back to our equation d2y by dx square plus p dy by dx plus qy is equal to r now let's do the substitutions d2y by dx square is this so dy by dz times d2z by dx square plus d2y by dz square times dz by dx square plus p times dy by dx so p times dy by dx can be written as dy by dz dz by dx so dy by dz times dz by dx plus qy is equal to r okay now let's do the necessary grouping uh, here if you notice we have dy by dz and here we have dy by dz right so let's take d2y by d z square d2y by dz square along with that we have dz by dx square plus now we take this dy by dz dy by dz common thing so dy by dz d2z by d2z by dx square plus p d z by d x plus q y is equal to r okay so here we need to get rid of this to make uh, make it into a standard form so we divide 
both sides by dz by dx square so what happens this gets cancelled we are left with d square y d2y by dz square plus dy by dz now let's do, write it in the proper way uh, let's put this bracket here d2z by dx square plus p dz by dx dy by dz divided by dz by dx square plus qy so qy divided by again dz by dx square is equal to r divided by again dz by dx square right okay so here p1 would be this part that is the coefficient of dy by dz would be your p1 so p1 would be d2z by dx square plus p dz by dx divided by dz by dx the whole square or rather dz by dx square q1 would be q by dz by dx square and r1 would be r by dz by dx square so that means our equation can be written as d2y by dz square plus p1 dy by dz plus q1 y is equal to r1 now here r1 p1 and q1 are functions of x and in this equation uh, if you notice everything is with respect to z now now the point is we have to take care of z here uh, as part of derivation we have just said z but how do we actually figure out z that is what we need to look at so there are two methods one is let q1 be a multiple of f of x which implies magnitude of q1 is equal to k times f of x right let's take z such that so which means z is something arbitrary we can uh, take up anything that satisfies our or simplifies our equation to a form which we can solve such that dz by d x square is equal to f of x right so which implies that dz by dx would be equal to square root of f of x right so therefore q1 would become or q1 would be k times f of x by f of x which is equal to k because these two will get cancelled which is a constant so here sorry this should be q not q1 right so q1 becomes a constant so q gets transformed into a constant now if p1 also becomes a constant then it becomes very easy to solve the problem as an example let's say q is equal to minus 2y cos square x right now we have to choose z for this i'm just showing you one part of it part of a problem right where q is equal to this so choose z such that dz by dx square is equal to minus 2 cos square x by the way when we say q y would not be part of that because q y so y is separate q is a coefficient of y okay anyhow so which means if we remove this square the other side becomes uh, remember we can't take negative number remember here we are taking absolute value or magnitude of q so which means minus will not be there 
So even though Q is minus 2, when we take it here, we ignore the minus sign. And in the, here itself, you will realize why we don't want minus sign. So now, dz by dx would be square root of 2 cos square x. Did you realize why we don't want negative sign? Because then we end up with complex numbers, right? Imaginary numbers. Okay, so this can be written as square root of 2 cos x. So dz by dx is equal to so root 2 cos x. So which means our z would be equal to what? z would be equal to root 2 is a constant. We have to integrate this to get z. So root 2 is a constant remains as it is. Integral of cos x is sin x. So our z would be equal to root 2 sin x in this particular case when q is equal to this. Right? Got the idea? So this is just a particular example to give you an idea of what we are talking of. Now that is one method. Another uh, uh, way in which we can figure out z is if we choose z such that d2z by dx square plus p dz by dx is equal to 0. Right? If this is equal to 0, that means we choose a z in such a way that this is equal to 0, then p1 would be equal to 0. Right? So, which means we have to solve this equation in a particular context. But in general, we would say z is equal to integral of x times integral factor dx. Here, i is equal to, remember, e to the power of minus integral of p dx. So, we can use this method to identify z. Okay. Now, in this method, if for this z q1 also becomes a constant then the equation can be solved easily so if you notice uh, we had method one in which choose z such that dz by dx square is equal to magnitude of q right after doing this if p1 becomes a constant great right then it, it becomes easy to solve in method to choose z such that d2z by dx square plus p dz by dx is equal to 0 then p1 equal to 0 and if q1 becomes a constant then easy to calculate easily calculable yes so here we are using q and checking whether p1 becomes constant here we are arriving at p1 equal to 0 so that we can check whether q1 becomes so that is the method wherein we change the independent variable. In the next session, we will actually uh, take up a particular, uh, you know, one or two problems and solve it and see how this gets applied. Bye for now.